down the Via Dolorosa in Jerusalem that day. The soldiers tried to clear the narrow street, but the crowd pressed in to see the man condemned to die on Calvary. He was bleeding from a beating, there were stripes upon his back. And he wore a crown of thorns upon his head And he bore with every step The scorn of those who cried out for his death Down the Via Dolorosa Called the way of suffering Like a lamb came the Messiah John, who was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, Are you the one who has to come, or should we expect someone else? Jesus replied, Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight, the lame walk, those who have leprosy are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the good news is proclaimed to the poor.
On the night before he was to suffer, Jesus went out to his disciples across the Kidron Valley to where there was a garden into which he and his disciples entered. My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me. Not what I will, but what you will. Simon, are you asleep? If you do not watch for one hour, pray that you may not undergo the test, for the Spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me, your will be done. still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners. Get up. Let us go see. My betrayer is at hand. Rabbi. Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? Who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene. I am he. I told you that I am he. So if you're looking for me, let these men go. Well done. This was the reason he was born, and for this he came into the world to walk for us the road to Calvary. Let us begin this reenactment of his journey with prayer. Blessed Mary, you were the first to live the way of the cross. You suffered indescribable pain as you watched in agony your son die on a cross and watched the crowd hate him with diabolical fury. Inspire me with your strength and love for Jesus to remember how much he loves me. Help me to truly understand that Jesus gave his life for all of us to cover our sins and to allow us to be filled with his spirit. Sweet mother, let us walk this road together and allow the love in my heart to give you some slight consolation. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then the whole company of them arose and brought him before Pontius Pilate. What charge do you bring against this man? If he weren't a criminal, would we have handed him over to you? Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. We do not have the right to execute anyone. We found this man misleading our people. He refuses the payment taxes of Caesar, and he claims that he is the Christ, a king. Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this on your own? Or have others told you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. Then you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I was brought into the world, to testify to the truth. Anyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. 
What is truth? While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him. Have nothing to do with this righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in a dream. No, you don't understand. You will be hated forever. I find no guilt at him. While I have been your governor, I've learned your traditions. There is a custom that I release one prisoner to you over Passover. Whom shall I release to you? Barabbas the murderer, or Jesus called Christ? Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Not this man, give us Barabbas! 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 Give us Barabbas! Not this man, Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! Barabbas, give us Barabbas! Release Jesus! His only crime has been to heal your sick and raise your dead. Save him, you yourselves may need mercy. Would you listen to the harlot of Magdala over your high priest? Give us Barabbas! 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 Give us Release him! Jesus. Now what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? Take him away! Crucify him! Take him! Crucify him! I Take find him. no case against this man! Look at him! Behold the man! Take him away! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Crucify Take him away and crucify him yourselves! Why must he die? We have a law, and according to that law, he must be put to death. Because he claims that he is the son of God. Where do you come from? Are you refusing to speak to me? Surely you know I have the power to release you, and I have the power to crucify you. You will have no power over me if it had not been given to you from above. That is why the man who handed me over to you has the greater guilt. Take him away! Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him away! Crucify I find him. no case against this man! If you set him free, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king is no is defying Caesar! Crucify him! Take him away! Crucify him! Take him away! Crucify Shall him. I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar! Crucify him! Take him away! Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him away! Is, you are here to keep Caesar's peace. Is this how you keep Caesar's peace? Take him away! Crucify him! Crucify him! Take him away! Crucify him! Silence! Water. I've learned your customs, priest, and how important it is for you to use to purify yourselves. Look, I'm purifying myself. I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. My Jesus, the world still has you on trial. It asks you what you are doing here. And if you really are the Son of God, where are your miracles? Why are you remaining silent? In the depths of my soul, I too have these questions. The answer is given through the Father's will. The Father allows many sufferings to occur in my life, but it is for my own good. And with my faith, I should be ready to face the struggles no matter how difficult. My Jesus, bless us with strength to stand tall through ridicule and accusation that the world puts upon us. Give us your support so that we can remain your followers. Jesus, Lord, condemned, defiled, may we to be meek and mild, as we tread your holy way, may we feel no bitter hatred when we to our persecuted. alone to walk with you. Now the cross as Jesus bore it has become for us who share it. The jeweled cross of victory
The second station, Jesus takes his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Then the soldiers of the government took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him. They put a purple robe upon him, and weaving a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. Be careful with him. Don't you know he's a king? He doesn't look like a king. That's because he doesn't have his royal robe, but this will work. And he's your royal scepter, king. He's no king without a crown. Can't forget your throne. <laughs> All hail the King of the Jews. All, All hail the King of the Jews. Of the Jews. <laughs> no, <please>. no. <laughs> Prophesy, great king, who hit you? And when they had mocked him, they led him away to crucify him. By taking more and more steps, Lord Jesus, the cross pushed against the thorns of your crown, driving them deeper and deeper into your head. Seeing how hard the Father's will is pressed upon you and how you gave your life for us, why then do I complain when it is so hard on me? I see injustice and I am frustrated when my plans to alleviate it seem futile. I despair. My concept is the suffering, like food, should be equally shared. How ridiculous is that, dear Lord? Just as we don't all need the same amount of material food, we don't need the same amount of spiritual food, and that's what the cross in my life, isn't it? Spiritual food proportional to my needs. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. The street was narrow and it was crowded, for the people were curious to see the man called Jesus on his way to a place of execution. Jesus was weak and he stumbled and fell. The crowd jeered him and the soldiers cursed him. But Jesus stood up and he took his cross again and continued on, fulfilling the words of the prophet Isaiah who wrote, Surely he was born out of grief and carried our sorrows, but he was wounded for our transgressions and with his stripes we are healed. I would have thought you would be able to carry your cross without falling, but you did fall. You fail to show us that you understand when we fall. You are not ashamed to fall. To admit it was a heavy burden. The Father permits failure in our life, that there is good in that failure. Your love for me gave you the strength to rise from your fall. 
Look upon all those who the world seems unprofitable servants and give them the courage to be more concerned as to how they stand before you. Raise their heads to see the glory that is to come rather than the misery of the present moment. station Jesus meets his mother we adore you O Christ and we praise you because by our holy cross you have redeemed the world the mother of Jesus came up from Nazareth to Jerusalem to eat the Passover meal with Jesus and his apostles after his arrest she searched for him just as she had searched for him as a boy but she did not find him in the temple this time Stay back. Please, she's his mother. She found him in the street, beaten, bloody, and bowed down under the weight of the cross. As she looked upon him, she remembered and understood of the words of the prophet Simeon, who had said to her, And you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Remember the words of the prophet Isaiah. See, I am doing something new. My Jesus, it was with great sorrow to realize your pain caused Mary so much grief. When you glanced at each other in unutterable suffering, what gave you both the courage to carry on without anger at such injustice? As I see so much suffering in the world, there are times that I think it is all hopeless. I think of that glance between you and Mary, the glance that said, let us give this misery to the Father for the salvation of souls. The Father's power takes our pain and frustration and renews souls, saves them for a new life. It is worth everything. Give perseverance to the sick so they can carry the cross of frustration and agony with love and resignation for the salvation of others. Simon stopped in hesitation, not foreseeing his proud station, called to bear the cross of Christ. O quam tristis et afflicta, fuit hila benedicta. Mater unigeniti. The fifth station, Simon helps Jesus carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. As by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Keep it moving. The soldiers realize that Jesus is weak and fear that he might die before they reach the place of crucifixion. They seized a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country and compelled him to carry the cross behind Jesus. What? Shut up. Get up. Come on, lift it. There you go. When you let Simon carry your cross, you showed me how humble you are and how your humility is beyond comprehension. People today, including me, have trouble with humility and letting others carry our crosses. Please help me to open up and let others help me carry my cross just like you let Simon carry yours. 
Help me, Jesus, to trust your loving providence as you permit suffering to weave itself in and out of my life. When I enter your kingdom, I shall know how, as he knows, what marvels your cross has wrought in my soul. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Whenever Jesus preached, the people brought him the sick, the lame, and the blind, and he healed them all. No one who was in need was ever turned away. But now, when Jesus was in need, no one stepped forward to help him. No one, that is, except for an unknown woman who pushed her way through the crowd and into the street. She stopped in front of Jesus and gently wiped his face, wiping away the blood, the sweat, and the spittle, and giving him comfort and dignity. And because she lived the teachings of Jesus, he left the imprint of his face upon her veil, and henceforth she would always be known as Veronica, the true image. My Jesus. It is so easy to see the pain that you are suffering. In your time of need, those who you have helped were not present to repay the favor. However, the one woman, Veronica, who cared so much for you, wiped your weakened and tired face to reduce the burden of your journey. Through this act of kindness, you have shown your true power and left the imprint of your face on the cloth Veronica used. Imprint your divine image upon my soul and let the thin veil of my human nature bear perfect resemblance to your loving spirit. seventh station Jesus falls the second time we adore you O Christ and we praise you because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world the cross was heavy and it bore down upon his shoulders each step was an effort requiring all his strength again his human nature failed and Jesus fell a second time the Son of Man yeah, fell into the dust on the road, scraping his hands and knees. But once again, he struggled to his feet and took up his cross. For, as Isaiah wrote of him, in all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. My Jesus, your greatest quality admired is your strength in this time of ridicule. You fell again defeated by the weight of the cross. Sometimes I judge by the appearance and how incorrect I am most of the time. The world judges by this false method. It judges poor people as failures 
the sick as worthless and the elderly as a disturbance. Your best moment was in your weakest. Your greatest triumph was in failure. Feeble and strong Jesus, help me to be more aware of your wisdom in the midst of this weakness. Give the elderly, the handicapped, the ill, and the fruit of joy so they are forever aware of the Father and his gift. sympathy for Jesus turn to those who here now need us may we see Christ bruised in them quis non posset contristari pia matrem contemplari Dolentem cum filio. The eighth station, Jesus consoles the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. As by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. A large crowd of people followed Jesus, including many women who mourned and lamented him. And Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but rather for yourselves and your children. If these things are done when the wood is green, what will happen when the wood is dry? My Jesus, I am amazed at your compassion for others in your time of need. When you saw the holy women weeping over your torments, you consoled them and taught them to look deeper into your passion. You wanted them to understand that the real evil to cry over was the rejection you suffered from the chosen people, people set apart from every other nation, who refused to accept God's Son. I miss the many disguises you take upon yourself and see only people, circumstances, and huge events not the loving hand of the Father guiding all things. Help all of those who are discouraged, sick, lonely, and too old to recognize your presence in their midst. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Jesus became weaker with every step, and every step was stained with his blood. He could go on no further, and he fell a third time. He could have stayed there, he could have refused to go further, but to fulfill his work, Jesus stood up once more and once again took his cross upon his shoulder. Thus it can be said that we have not a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. My Jesus, even with the help of Simon, you fell a third time. Were you telling me that there will be many times in my life that I will fall again and again, despite the help of friends and loved ones? 
when I cry out from the depths of my soul, this suffering is more than I can bear. Do you whisper, yes, I understand? When I am encouraged after many falls, do you say to my innermost being, keep going, I know how hard it is to rise. There are many people who are tired in body and soul with alcohol and drug weaknesses who try and try and fall again and again. Through the humiliation of this third fall, give them the courage and the perseverance to take up their cross and follow you. Stripped and jeered by his own nation, Jesus stood in desolation, giving all he had to give. The tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. And when they reached Golgotha, that is, the place of the skull, they stripped Jesus of his clothing. They divided his clothing among them, but his tunic was without seam, woven from top to the bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots to see what it is. This was to fulfill the scripture. They parted my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. It seems that every step to Calvary brought you fresh humiliation, my Jesus. How your sensitive nature recoiled at being stripped before a crowd of people. In your loving mind, dear Jesus, did you look up to the Father as you stood there on that windy hill, shivering from the cold and the shame and trembling from fear and ask him to give mercy on those who would violate their purity and make love a mockery? Did you ask forgiveness for those whose greed would make them lie, cheat, and steal for a few pieces of cold silver? Forgive us all, dear Jesus. Look up to the world with pity, for mankind has lost its way where the principles of this world make lust a fun game and luxury a necessity. Have mercy on us and grant the people of this day the courage to see and know themselves in the light to change. Here's the hands that blessed and cured us. Here's the feet that walk to free us. Walk the hill of Calvary. Ea mater fons amoris, me sentire vim doloris. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have the world. And when they reached the place of the skull, they crucified him. They laid him upon the rough wood of the cross and stretched out his arm. They placed a heavy spike against his hand, the hand that had blessed the children and raised the rabbi's daughter to life and drove that spike through his hand and into the cross. They placed the spike against his other hand, the hand that had made the blind see and the lame walk, and nailed it too to the cross. And then they crossed his feet, 
one over the other, the feet that had been washed by the tears of the repentant woman and dried with her hair, and fastened them to the cross with a third spike. All this was done to fulfill the prophecy, they pierced my hands and my feet, I can count all my bones. It is hard to imagine God being nailed to the cross by his own creations. As those heavy nails were driven into your hands and feet, did you offer the pain as reparation for some particular human weakness or sin? It seems, dear Jesus, your love has held you bound hand and foot as your heart pleads for a return of love. You seem to shout out from the top of the hill, I love you, come to me. See, I am held fast. I cannot hurt you. Only you can hurt me. How hard is it that the heart can see such love and turn away? Teach me to keep my arms ever open to love, to forgive and to render service willingly, to be hurt rather than hurt, satisfied to love and not be loved in return. Life eternal, death defiant, Bowed his head, the world was silent. Through his death came life anew. Aput arde at cormeum, in amando Christum Deum, ut si become placeam. The twelfth station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. Raise him up. They crucified him there, and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He has saved others. Why doesn't he save himself? If he is the chosen one, come down from the cross, and then we'll believe in you. From noon onwards, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Two others, who were criminals, had been led away to be crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. One of the criminals said to him, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Have you no fear of God at all? You got the same sentence as he did, but we deserved it. We are paying for what we did. This man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, Remember me when you come to your kingdom. <coughs> Truly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near, he said to them, Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? <laughs> He's calling to Elijah. Wait, let's see if Elijah comes. I thirst. <laughs> it is finished. Father, into your hands, I commend my spirit.
No wonder the earth quaked, the sun hid itself, and Mary stood by in horror. Your human body gave up its soul to death, but your dignity, dear Jesus, continued to manifest its power. All creation rebelled as the word made flesh departed from this world. Man alone was too proud to see and too stubborn to acknowledge truth. Forgive our pride, dear Jesus, as we spend hours speculating, days arguing, and often a lifetime in rejecting your death, which is a sublime mystery. Have pity on those whose intelligence leads them to pride because they never felt the need to reach out to the man of sorrows for consolation. Stunned and stricken, Mary Mother, in your arms was placed our brother. Full of grace, now filled with grief. Sancta Mater, he stood august, crucifixi fige plagas, cordi meo valide. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. Nicodemus also, who had first come to him by night, came bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes. He's big enough to walk And even then I'll pick him up And I will teach him how to talk To say the words that will save All the people of every nation I will feed the flesh And I will bring about salvation when he kisses me goodnight, I'll be living my reward. Be it done as you have said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. I will walk these roads behind him, and I will follow where he leads. I will be at his good work. And I will love the mouse he feeds I'll be a mother to my son And a brother for the world If you can set them free through Moses Then you can do it through this girl And when he brings the dead to life I'll be living my reward it's on as you have said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Lord, is this what you call me to, to watch him lose his life? I am bending, but will I break? How can I just stand by? All of heaven be with me now, he's my only son. Help me pray that prayer with him, Father, let your will be done. When he walks that lonely road, my heart will go with him. 
When he falls, the spirit dies. And when he bleeds, I hate this sin. And when he utters those last words, and when he finally hangs his head, I'll be planted in the ground. My whole life, my soul is dead. But I will stay here at this cross where he brought you your reward. Be it done as you have said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done as you have said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. They took the body of Jesus down and laid him in the arms of his mother. As she looked upon the myrrh brought by Nicodemus, she could not help but remember the gift of myrrh brought so many years ago by the wise men, the gift that prophesied this very day. My Jesus, it was with deep grief that Mary finally took you into her arms and saw all the wounds sin had inflicted upon you. Mary Magdalene looked upon your dead body with horror. Nicodemus, who came to you by night, suddenly received the courage to help Joseph take you down from the cross. When loneliness and failure cross my path, let me think of this lonely moment and this total failure, failure in the eyes of men. How wrong they were. How mistaken their concept of success. Give to all men the grace to see that doing your will is more important than success. Let not the standards of this world take possession of me or destroy the good you have set for me to be holy and to accomplish the Father's will with great love. Let me accept praise or blame, success or failure with equal serenity. Fourteenth station, Jesus is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it in linen cloth clothes with the spices, as is the burial custom of the Jews. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the tomb Joseph of Arimathea had carved out of a rock for himself. As it was the eve of the Sabbath, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. They rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary watched where he was laid. My Jesus, you were put to rest in a stranger's tomb. You were born with nothing and died detached from the world. When you were born, man was unaware of your birth, but the angels sang. When you died, everyone knew of it. Were you telling us how important our lives are just because we are accomplishing the Father's will? Will our own faith ever be strong enough to see the power and weakness and good in the sufferings of our lives? Will our hope be trusting enough to rely on your providence even when we have nowhere to lay our head? Will our love ever be strong enough not to take scandal on the cross? Let me rejoice, dear Jesus, with all the angels in a hymn of praise and thanksgiving for so great a love, so great a God, and so great a day. Ni a humana 
Bashbuka la nakaubai. I cannot have a Spachnen lechai bai. Ula kalana le mesiuna. Ela pasha. pray. My Jesus, I have traveled the way of the cross. It seems so real and I feel so ashamed. There are so many innocent people who suffer unjustly. Do we understand that you continue to carry your cross in the minds and the bodies of each of us? You saw beauty in the cross and embraced it as a desired treasure. My worldly mind is dulled by injustice and suffering, and I lose sight of the glory that is to come. Help me to trust the Father and to realize that there is something great behind the most insignificant suffering. There is something lifting my cross to fit my shoulders. 
Teach me the lessons contained in my cross, the wisdom of its necessity, the beauty of its variety, and the fortitude that accompanies even the smallest cross. Mary, my mother, obtain for me the grace to be Jesus to my neighbor and to see my neighbor in Jesus. Amen.